What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian Hansen. Right now I'm in Banda Aceh. But I've received so many comments saying, Chris, be careful, Banda Aceh is not safe. But I refuse to believe this. So in this episode, to prove it to you guys, I've invited my mother and her husband John all the way from Denmark. And together we're gonna explore Banda Aceh. Selamat datang di Banda Aceh. I really afraid because they didn't say tsunami. Just say the wave coming. A new videotape from Indonesia for the first time shows the devastating tsunami as it barreled through Aceh province two weeks ago. I had had an incredible stay in Takeon, but it was time to continue the journey. So I drove through the beautiful mountains of the Nagan Raya Regency on a course for the coastal city of Meolambo. The roads were just perfect and Toranga was loving it despite a bit of rain which made it a bit unsafe in terms of visibility. But luckily all my bags are waterproof so I had nothing to worry about on that part. The trip from Takingong to Bandache is far. So I stayed one night in Meulabo, the capital of the West Aceh Regency. Meulabo was one of the cities that got hit the hardest by the tsunami in 2004. But I'll tell you more about that later. Good morning guys, it is another beautiful day here in Indonesia and this morning I am in the West Aceh Regency. I left Meulabo at 9 o'clock this morning and today I will be driving all along the west coast on the US 8 highway all the way towards Banda Aceh. After uh, the tsunami in Aceh in 2004, the American government went in and supported and they supported with enough funds to build this um, massive coastal road. So according to my buddy Aaron MV, it's supposed to be a super easy chill ride, sixth gear all the way to Banda Aceh. So I'm super stoked about that because yesterday there was a lot of mountain roads. So yeah, let's make our way up the coastline and let's see what we find. You know, it's so difficult to document on camera the feeling you get when you see a view like this or even just showing you guys the view on video. It's not the same. That's why I urge you guys. When you see some of my videos and you're like, oh, I would love to go there, then do it at some time. Put it down on a list. Start saving up for it, whatever, because it's even more amazing to see it with your own two eyes. Let me give you a quick preview here. There are quite a lot of cows on these roads, so be careful if you drive here. But besides that, this is a great example of just how long and how smooth the roads really are here. I stayed a few nights in an area called Lo Nga, at a homestay called Yudi's Place to do some editing. The staff's son Dimas was very interested in my suit, and I tried my best to explain him why I wore just that. The beaches at Lo Nga are just amazing, and there are very few tourists there. But as much as I wanted to stay longer, it was time to continue the journey towards Banda Aceh, the largest city and capital in the province of Aceh. Wow, it is beautiful here. And there, some special guests had arrived at the airport. Hi. <laughs> guys we are finally starting our tour around Banda Aceh and now we are here at Masjid Raya by Turaman the Grand Mosque in Banda Aceh so before we can enter we have to take off our shoes my mother has to wear a scarf 
and then we cannot go inside of the mosque but we can go around it you can only go inside they say if you're a Muslim so we're just here to see the sights and everybody is super friendly super happy and excited to see us so let's go inside and check it out the Baituraman Grand Mosque is a symbol of religion culture spirit, strength, struggle, and nationalism for the Achenese people. It was first built in 1612. Since then it has been attacked by the VOC in 1873. Then it was rebuilt. It's been hit by earthquakes and the latest tsunami in 2004. And today the beautiful mosque stands taller and stronger than ever with its 35 meter high minaret. And on this particular Tuesday, we were very lucky to witness as a young couple were getting married in the Grand Mosque. Uh. <laughs> So guys, what do you think of the mosque here? It's beautiful, fantastic. I feel humbled to be here. Yeah. Because we're foreigners and we're loud and everybody's smiling. So. But it's not like you're feeling unwelcome here, right? No, not at all. No, no, no. And they were even helping with me with the scarf. And they got me a small needle so I could tie it to the neck. I think that was very nice of them. This is also what I'm trying to show you guys in this video is that don't be scared to come here to Mandacha. Quite the opposite actually. We were off to a great start, meeting nothing but good people all around. So we paid our respects and continued our journey to a place that we will never forget. A place that would take us 17 years back in time to the catastrophe that claimed the lives of more than 227,000 people on December 26, 2004. It's so nice just to walk around here in Banda Aceh. So we're now walking past the La Pangan Blanc Padang Park and we are on our way to the Tsunami Museum. We are all super excited to see this museum because there's so much history behind it. If, for some reason you didn't know, there was a big tsunami here in Banda Aceh in 2004. Killed hundreds of thousands of people, so let's go and learn a bit more about that. The admission price is only 3,000 rupiah for locals and 10,000 rupiah for foreigners. As we started our guided tour, we went from the golden map of the Aceh province towards the tsunami alley. A hallway designed to make you hear and feel how it is to be inside of a big wave. You then continue into the chamber of blessing or the prayer well with the sign of Allah on top. This is where you can pray for the people who passed on that day with many of the victims' names written across these walls. A bridge of peace has been built as a sign of light and hope for Aceh to rebuild. Before the tsunami, Aceh had been a conflict area between the Free Aceh Movement and the Indonesian Republic for almost 30 years. But eight months after the tsunami, a memorandum of understanding was signed in Finland and there could once again be peace in Aceh. On top of us we see all the countries who helped Indonesia during the tsunami disaster. One of the staff of the museum learned that the name of my mother's husband is John, so she asked if she could take a picture with John, because during the tsunami she had lost a family member, also named John. Even though we really enjoyed taking a ton of pictures with the other visitors, I could easily tell that this part of the history was affecting my mother and John. Being inside the museum and hearing the stories from some of the people who had lost family on that very day, it breaks your heart just a little bit. The thing that shocked my mother and John the most was how little they had actually heard about the impact this had had on Indonesia versus Thailand. Because back then the focus of the Danish media was on Thailand as 46 Danish people had lost their lives. But why hadn't we heard more about Indonesia? Now knowing that the souls lost in Indonesia were 20 times more than in Thailand. 
at 7.58, the magnitude 9.1 earthquake happened. And as the water started drawing back, many people were still busy picking up fish from the bottom, without knowing that 12 meter high waves were only 15 minutes away. Our tour guide Latifa agreed to share her own story with us from that Sunday morning in Banda Aceh. A new videotape from Indonesia for the first time shows the devastating tsunami as it barreled through Aceh province two weeks ago. Uh, when the tsunami took us in it and four, so I still at the house. Uh, I'm 14 years old at the time and I watch a, a video in the television, a cartoon, and two minutes before 8 o'clock the earthquake happens. And at the time we, we were panicked. My mom and I and uh, our family were panicked and after that we go out from our house because we afraid our house will collapse because of the earthquake. And the earthquake really, yeah, the shaking were really quad, sangat quad. So that's why we were really panicked. And my brother went to the main street and he said many, he sees so many people run from the beach. And he also heard from the people, uh, they said run, run, run. And they, they thought that uh, the wave coming, the wave coming. But they didn't say tsunami, just say the wave coming. And my mother suddenly remember, grandmother said to my mom in the past there was Ibena. Ibena means the wave. But at that time, my mother thought it's just a fairy tale, it's just a tale. But when tsunami happened, my mother said, oh, it's not a fairy tale. That's why we suddenly going to the higher place. At that time, the higher place was in the airport in Banda Aceh. And we also forgot to lock our house. And I also forgot to use my sandals because we were really panicked at that time. And we go by motorbike. So actually, uh, the motorbike also can two people can ride the motorbike. But at that time, we ride the bike five people. I really afraid because the street also crowded of the people, and the accidents also happen at that time. And when we arrive in the airport, we also see many people injured. After that, we, we knew what happened in Aceh. Latifa is without a doubt a very strong woman, and we are grateful she would share her story with us, and now with you. We then set out to find one of the most famous Achenese restaurants, so we could try the original Mi Banda Aceh. So this afternoon, guys, we have gone to one of the most famous restaurants here in Banda Aceh. It's called Mi Rasali, and they are, of course, famous for their Mi, I could see on my mother and John, they were a bit worried about this place because it is a little bit dirty, it doesn't really look like a fancy restaurant, but it has thousands of views on Google, so let's try the meat and see if they like it. Hopefully they will. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. Yeah, very. We're going to have some soup and some noodles with shrimps and some noodles with eggs. Yeah. So we're very excited to taste this because the recommendation is very good. Mitalua, the pasta, me, Uda. Uda. Oh, this is the Spicy, yeah? Oh, spicy. I like it. I like it. I can taste the shrimp. I like it. It's three different dishes, but it all tastes the same. It's good. It's, it's spicy and it's, it's very tasty, but. So if you come to Bandaji guys, of course you have to try this place because it is famous. But do expect the level of service here, I would say is so-so. The pricing is pretty good, it's quite cheap. But the taste, yeah it's good, but don't expect a lot of variance in the different dishes. Because it is a lot of the same, but we can all agree, we all like it, right? Alright guys, it has been a lot of busy months on the road and it's about time that I changed the oil on Turanga. We're gonna change the oil to the CTX 10W50 and we're gonna change the oil filter and the air filter. So due to the company's rule I cannot mention their name 
Um, but I still want to do a shout out to the boys here from let's give it a let's give it a code name. So let's call it Adno. So massive shout out to the guys here at Adno in Banda Aceh for helping me out. Thank you so much, guys, as always. Guys, now we are on our way out to visit a special mosque because the mosque we're about to go and see now is one of the only mosques close to the beach that was not completely destroyed during the tsunami in 2004. So the people here in Bandache really believe that this mosque is special. It's kind of like protected because when you watch the aerial photos from the tsunami, it looks just, it looks crazy, you know, you can see that everything is completely destroyed except for this. So we have to go and visit this special mosque. Yes, let's do it. Lampuk city is located on the western coast of Aceh. Only 500 meters from the ocean lies the beautiful mosque Masjid Ramatullah. Once again, it has become a famous tourist destination for its beautiful beach. But it took some time for the visitors to come back here after the tsunami took away more than half of the population of Lampuk. Some people call it Masjid Turkey also because uh, Turkey has supported this area with rebuilding the mosque, rebuilding the houses after the tsunami. So actually as we drove into this area, there was a big gate saying something about Turkey that this village is supported by Turkey, the country. Like we were told yesterday by Latifa at the Tsunami Museum, the waves that hit this area close to Bandache, they were 12 meters high. But if you go a little bit more south down to the western part of Aceh, down around Meulabo, the waves were 30 meters high. Imagine seeing a wave of 30 meters coming towards you. Turkey have actually supported Indonesia with more than 75 million US dollars since the former Turkish president Erdogan visited Banda Aceh shortly after the tsunami had hit. Since then, this area has been called Kampung Turkey Lampuk. So we headed down to the beach to see how it all looked like today. Looks nice. Looks <laughs> fantastic. Welcome to paradise. Yeah. Det er lidt noget andet end fedet. Ja. Ikke at vi ikke har det godt derhjemme, men det er det jo gratis. Og det er det. This is probably the most beautiful beach I have seen in Sumatra yet. It's absolutely incredible. You got the mountains right next to it. The water is just all blue. And most importantly, my mother and her husband John are loving it. So that makes me happy. So now I think the plan is pretty simple. We're gonna hang out here, drink some coconuts, and just enjoy the view. We are amazing driver today. He's been helping us around. Makasih ya. Yeah, sama-sama. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna go to Sabang. We had had an incredible time in Bandache. The city of strength, hope, perseverance, and orang bike. Don't be afraid to come to Banda Aceh. We can learn much about earthquake and tsunami because we live with disaster. And then in Banda Aceh, we prepare about tsunami. And then we also have traditional food and then coffee. If you like coffee, come to Aceh because we already prepared for the next tsunami. Good job. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode where we continue the journey to Pulaue, where Torangana will finally reach Kilometer 0, our final stop on the island of Sumatra.
we got it all to ourselves. It's perfect.